It's the Grand Center right thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light Little Flock. I see y'all stretching. You're getting ready to eat some green grass and enjoy your day by still waters. I want y'all to think about whether man fears man or man fears God. What do you guys think? Now we know that Abba warned us not to fear man. fear other men. So my question is, is man fearing man or is man fearing God? Now, why does man fear man? Well, Abba says, he be scared of man because man can kill him. <laughs> now that's sad, ain't it? Man is afraid of his brother because his brother has the ability to kill him, to kill his body. That's why he's wary of man. That's sad. Because when one sees his brother, he should feel safe. He should feel reinforced. He should feel supported. You see, he should feel the support of his brother. But instead, when he sees his brother, he feels fear for his life. And this is in the very beginning with Cain and Abel. Y'all know that. So he's fearing for his life. And another way of looking at this fear is judgment. Judgment. Man correlates judgment with life and death. You see? That's what scares him about judgment. It's his life. Whether that be locked away for 30 years, that's like losing your life. So when you go before the judge, you'd be nervous about whether you're going get, to get punished or be given grace. It's only two options when you've committed a crime. You can either get grace, get some easy, ooh, man, some probation, woo, Lord, thank you. Where you get something 30 years life uh oh uh oh so he's nervous about judgment well when he knows the truth about judgment he doesn't have to be nervous anymore and he doesn't have to fear anymore and he damn sure won't fear his brother anymore because abba already told him he can't touch your soul so wait a minute my thoughts and my feelings which is the substance that makes up my soul my soul body my emotions, my feelings, you see? That's all tied to my soul body. He can't actually touch that. Now, Abba can destroy that, that's what he said. I can destroy your body and your soul. I can destroy your physical body and your thoughts and your feelings. But he gave you a clue about man right there if you were paying attention, about the limitation of man. Man cannot actually affect your thoughts and feelings. He can only affect your physical experience. That's what Abba was telling you there. When he says, don't fear him, he can't destroy the soul. He can't destroy your thoughts and feelings. You destroy that because he can't actually touch your thoughts and feelings. He can't. You're in control of that at all times. So you decide where your thoughts and feelings go. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, that's why I always say thoughts and feelings. A man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Whatever he thinks about feelingly is what he is. You see? And that's why when you have a clear conscience, you don't have to think feelingly with guilt. Which is what brings about the judgment. See, because when you didn't do anything wrong, you don't have anything to fear. So your thoughts and feelings are fearless inside. So then what are you on the outside? See? 
As within, so without. People want to think about up somewhere. It's within. The kingdom of heaven is within you. You see that? Now, if you let some messenger come to your throne in your kingdom and make up some lie and tell you some message about another nation and what they're doing out there and how they're coming to destroy you and take all your goods and take your wives off captive and everything. If you're afraid of man, then you will, your thoughts and feelings will be affected by that, by that message. But if your thoughts and feelings are intact, then I am, then any, no one else's message can affect that. See, can't, can't touch your soul. So now when you live in your life, pay attention to how people are, ju what judgment they're putting themselves under. Because you can put yourself under the judgment of the Father, or as David said, let me fall into the hands of the Lord. Do you understand that now? It, that was about judgment when he said that. Do you want this, 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 or do you want that? He was like, man, I'm falling into the hands of Abba. I know I did wrong, but whatever he decides is my punishment. That's what I'll accept. You see that there? He, was, he also said in another place, I have sinned, but I haven't sinned against anybody but you, Father. You see that there? It looks like you're doing something to somebody else, but you're only doing it to Abba because he's the one who created it all. So when you offend something, you're offending his property. When you hate something, you hate his property. You see that? You hate what he made. So it ain't about you. You may think it is. You may think it's about you, and you may think it's about that person standing in front of you. But he's telling you it's not. It's about him. It's about him. He's, so you need to focus on what he's told you. And like I said, when you look out into the world, you'll notice people doing everything that they do to be seen of men. And Christ also told you that. So then you're just confirming what he told you when you see it. You say, he told me the truth again. People are doing what they're doing because they know how they know how men judge. See? And once you know this little tidbit of information, it takes you so far. Once you really hear that, because I, I can keep telling it to you, but until you actually receive it, then you don't know what I'm talking about when I say, God doesn't judge as man judges. For man judges outward appearance, but the Father looks on the heart. Stop! But see, y'all don't want to stop right there and receive that completely. Y'all hear it, and then you just keep on running off. Oh, well, da 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 Outward appearance is what matters to me. And like I said, you can't lie to me because I see what you're doing. I know when a man is trying to impress God or he's trying to impress men. I know that because I know what to look for. Abba is not impressed by anything you do outwardly. Your good works are as filthy rags, the Bible says. Yeah, the things you're doing in the 3D because it must come from your heart. And if it doesn't come from your heart, it's a filthy rag. I don't give a damn how good it looked what you did. See what I'm trying to tell it to you? You're so caught up on looks, then you're judging as man judges. And then once you go out into the world and you start to see men doing things to be judged by men because they're doing it outwardly. They do it to receive the praises of men, the scripture says. And then you see them doing it. So they're not concerned with God's judgment then. God's judgment is secondary to man's judgment. So what's going on here? Man has made his fellow man his God over him. Idol worship. Idol worship. Idolatry. Adultery. Read your scriptures. You care so much about Gentiles and what they think about you that you're not even focused on what Abba thinks about you. You deny the weight of your matters. This is exactly what we're talking about today. The weight of your matters are the matters of the heart. Christ brought the whole world back to that. Tell me he did not. But see, when I do that, and then y'all say, well, yeah, he did do that. Okay, then. So then what should you do? I should be like him. Well, then do it. Stop getting deceived by how something look on the outside, man. That shit been full of human beings since the beginning of time. 
you got to remember, Cain did something that he thought looked good. He did something he thought looked good to God. You see, it looked good, but Abel did what was good. And so what did God tell Cain? If you do the good thing, don't you think that you'll be blessed? But if you do evil, then sin lieth at the door, man. Ain't that what he told him? So then, if he doesn't change, then has that principle changed? No, it hasn't. No, it hasn't. Don't offer to God something that looked good on the outside, but is wicked and filthy on the inside. Why would you give God that? Would you give that to your wife? I mean, hear what we're saying here. You would go to your wife and give your wife a beautiful cake. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. But on the inside, it's full of worms. It's molded. You just put some new icing on top of a moldy-ass cake and presented it. And it looked beautiful. And so they accepted it. But when they started to eat it, they got sick. And some of them died. But y'all don't seem to understand that it's not about how it looked to you. It's about what it is to you. That's how God judges a thing. What shouldn't you? I mean, let's keep it real today. Shouldn't you judge something based off of what it really is and not what you what it looks like it is? People then got so dumb about outward appearance, they will see another human being, and because this other human being's skin color is different than theirs, then they must just be low value. They must be a criminal. They must be dirty. They must be sneaky. They must be untrustworthy. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, humanity? You're that stupid. And then humans come up with all these cliche lines that they've stolen from God. Oh, don't judge a book by its cover. Well, why do y'all believe that? But then y'all go along judging books by their cover, dumbasses. Why sit up here and say that then? If you're yourself not going to do it. Just like God said, man, be a doer of his word, not just a hearer only of it. Don't hear this message and say, wait a minute. When I got dressed today. Was I getting dressed to appear a certain way unto men so that I could receive glory from men? Was I doing that? And then if the answer is yes, then what are you doing? Committing adultery on God. That's what you're doing. You're, 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 you're being a deceiver. Nobody that is something has to do something to prove that they are something. They just are the thing. They just are it. The hell? They don't have to go, okay, wait a minute. I'm a shovel. But this man doesn't believe I'm a shovel. So, I have to dig a big ass hole for this man for him to realize he can use me as a shovel. like that he has faith in you that you are what you are and so he uses you accordingly and when he uses you you either work or you don't work and that proves what you are or not so then if that's the case then if I pick up something that looks like it works on the outside will it always work no but if I pick something that is working on the inside then does it matter about the outside if I need the use of the object. Y'all have seen this in your own lives. It'd be an old ass man with an old ass piece of machinery that he's passed down from his grandfather or something. It's an old tool or something that he uses. It's hideous. It's dirty. It's filthy. It's ugly and every damn thing. But it worked. Like his old pickup truck on the farm. It's old as hell, but it worked and it hauls those bells of hay to where he needed to go. But then there's some person saying, why don't we get a new truck that looks better? Because it may not work better. What I got works right. As y'all say, if it ain't broke, 
that don't fix it. But y'all would rather be in something that looks tremendous and beautiful, that may work for a while. Ride in this tractor, ha ha, the hell with that pickup truck over there, Mr. Southerner got over here, Mr. Southers got over there, look what I have. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, look what I got. Got this John Deere tracker. Oh shit. Yep. Take it back to get maintenance. Take it back to get maintenance. Now while your shit get maintenance, Mr. Southern's over there all in his hay. Yeah, he gotta take a few more trips, but he can reliably reliably take those trips. Because what he got worked from the inside. And y'all know this. That's what I'm saying. Y'all know this principle. There's a nice... Y'all remember back in school when those mechanical pencils came out? <laughs> it's a normal thing now, but I remember when I was young, it was like a new thing. And I used to see those, I used to think that was so cool. Like, wow, man, you got a mechanical pencil, man? Let me borrow that. <laughs> but the point is, y'all remember that you had those little pencils, and some of them had like 0 0.3 lead, some of them had 0 0.5 lead. And you had to have the lead that came in a little dispenser that you had to put into that pencil that fit that pencil so you could make use of it. Y'all remember that? And if the lead was too big, you would try to click it and it wouldn't come out the hole. You'd be like, damn, that's the wrong size lead. Or if it was too little, it just slipped down out the damn hole. You're like, damn, I need the right lead. So until you get the right lead, is that pencil of any use to you or no? Nah? Skeetin' dee 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 skeetin' dee dee. You know the answer. You know it. It ain't no good because if you were like me, you had some mechanical pencils that ran out of lead and that shit used to just sit in your little pouch. Say, a girl asking for your phone number, you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, hold on, wait, let me get my pencil. Pull that pencil out, click, 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 click. Oh, shit, click, click, click. Damn, tell it to me, girl. I remember it. I remember it. Believe me, I'll write it on my heart. <laughs> That's the point. It's about what's inside of the thing. If that pencil ain't got no lead in it, then you can't use it to do nothing. It just look cute. It just looks sweet. Got a little button on it. You pushing a little button and shit. You shaking it. Damn, ain't no lead in here. Shit empty, man. For instance, another example. You got a badass Draco. You just bought it, spent a whole lot of money on it. You like, nigga, run up on me, I'm gonna lay his ass down. Okay, but you forgot to buy the ammunition. <laughs> Skeet dee 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 dee. That's right. The nigga ran up on you and you didn't have any ammunition in your gun, but you had the gun. So when you first pulled it out, the guy got nervous. He said, oh, shit, he gonna blast me. When you pulled the trigger and it went clickety-click and nothing came out of there, guess what your op did? He said, oh, yeah? We ain't got no ammunition in that gun? <laughs> well, in that case, <laughs> let's get this party started, buddy. And y'all know that's the case. So once again, we're proving it's about what's going on in the internal. <laughs> because if that gun ain't got no ammo in it, Yes, it looks all nice and everything. It looks very dangerous in your hand, but it ain't. It's a dud. It's fake. It's phony. It's not going to hurt me. It's not produ productive. And y'all think that it's different? Those principles exist in everything. I'll keep giving them to you if you need me to in case you ain't getting this. <laughs> I would say two or three witnesses establishes a matter. So, okay, let's get another witness. You got a call. <laughs> you got a car and that bitch ain't got no gas in it it's a rolls royce phantom okay this shit is a bitly continental sitting there you just copped it you feeling good as hell because you want to go show off to people <laughs> and guess what happens when you turn the ignition or push the button <laughs> guess what happens Y'all familiar with that song? And they're like, stop, man, stop before you drain the battery. It's not gonna start because you don't have any fuel because you don't have any fuel in it. So all of that all that shit ain't gonna do shit but waste your time and waste all the energy in your battery and probably do worse to your car. So just stop. 
Get your gas can. Get the skilly den down in Sunoco there. <laughs> Give that clerk five bucks. Fill that can up. Go back to your car and let's put that gas in there. And now watch it. There we go. Oh boy. But then they can Manny Fresh say, I got a quarter tank of gas in my new E class. Uh huh. So I got a badass car with a little tiny ass bit of gas in that shit. Because I'm hood rich. That's what he said. Hood rich, man. Hood rich is, a, is not just rich. It's a certain type of richness. What is hood rich? I ain't really got a whole lot of money, but I got a little bit of money. So I flaunt it to make it look like I got a whole lot of money. So I got a new E-Class, but it only got a quarter tank of gas. <laughs> hood rich. Well, I got a brand new Escalade living in my mama's basement. Hood rich. Well, I got a $20,000 diamond chain on, but my baby ain't got no milk. Hood rich. It look rich, but it ain't. That's hood rich. All about illusions and pleasing men. It's something, man. And like I told you, when you really experience it for yourself, you start seeing the foolery of the shit. You start being like, hold on a minute here. Wait, 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 wait. In 2007, that's 2023 now. But listen at this, y'all. I'll give you no, no, my own personal experience so that you know I'm in. In 2007, 